So according to some stats online, which who knows where they get these things from, but anyway, it says that one third of the American population listens to podcasts regularly. They also say that the worldwide listeners of podcasts just simply grow every year. So I think it's safe to say that in the world, there's a lot of people that do enjoy podcasts. And I know that a lot of people swear by it and think that it makes their life better simply. At the same time, I also know that there's a lot of people that don't listen to podcasts and don't enjoy it. And maybe they have tried and it just didn't make sense. They couldn't make it work in their life in a smooth way. And simply they don't become podcast listeners. So what's the difference between these two groups? That's basically what this podcast episode is going to be about. I want to help people basically get more out of their podcast listening so that we can have more people that enjoy these life-changing benefits. And of course, when it comes to beach volleyball, beach volleyball benefits. What's up? Alex here. This is the Learn Beach Hole Fast Podcast. Welcome to the show or welcome back to the show, whatever <laughs> is your situation. Uh, this is um, this is a special episode. This is a different episode than many others. Um, it's a solo episode with me, but I'm also going to talk about something very important. It's like a meta episode for the podcast itself because it's about podcast listening and how to make podcast listening better. So this is part three out of hopefully there's probably only going to be three parts in the series but this is anyway the part three of this three-part series and um, in this one i'm just going to share a lot of uh, hacks and tricks that makes podcast listening easier and more efficient for you in your life so that you get more out of it so hopefully hopefully at this point you have seen or heard part one and seen part two and now you're listening to part three If you haven't, I guess this episode will make sense anyway. Like, even if you haven't seen the previous parts of the series, but I think it's going to make even more sense if you have seen those. Uh, But yeah, I... uh, Some some history. In the beginning, the Beach... In the beginning, the Learn Beach Wall Fast project was just a YouTube channel. And I created YouTube content and whatever. And there was followers in that time. And then at some point I decided to also launch a podcast. So the Learn Beach Follow Fast project became my YouTube channel and a podcast. And I think <laughs> I think there was some pre-podcast time followers that it just didn't make sense for. It was just like, what are these long pictureless videos with a lot of talking? Like, this is not what I signed up for. Blah, 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 blah. So actually, I just re-listened to a few days ago, the first episode I ever dropped on the podcast. And in the intro, I believe I said that soon I'm going to release this like podcast listening guide to make this make more sense for you guys and make it better for you guys. So here I am doing that now. I like to keep my promises when I have delivered them. And I really, (laughs) I mean, I want the best for the followers of my project. Uh, Many of you started following me because of the videos. I now create also podcast episodes. I really want you to get the most out of this because I'm creating this project in the way that I believe that you can get the most out of it. But I also know that some people don't get anything out of podcasts because they don't haven't figured out how to listen to them efficiently. So anyway, this is just a... <laughs> I'm <laughs> it's like a... It's like a win-win. Like, of course, if I can create this episode and it creates, it makes a lot of my followers actually start listening to my podcast episodes also, that's a win for me. But it's also a win for you guys if the podcast episodes bring a lot of value to your life. So it's just, uh, I just don't like inefficiencies. And uh, I think that's the short way to say this. I don't like inefficiencies and... I know it's a huge inefficiency when people don't listen to amazing podcast episodes that exist. (laughs) So we're going to try to fix that here. Now we're going to jump into the actual contents of this episode. But first, let me just be bold and fucking waste some of your time. By just being quiet, making some noise and telling you that I played beach volleyball today. (laughs) 
Now, why, why, why would I do that? Um, so I hope at this point that you have understood that I'm hoping that you're listening to this while you're doing something else while you're walking to work, while you're wor walking to beach volleyball practice or taking the bike or the train or the, the car or whatever you might be doing, or maybe while you're cooking or maybe while you're eating, if you happen to eat alone. Don't listen to this as you're eating <laughs> with other people, unless you're listening to it with the other people. But, you know, don't sit and have dinner with someone and just have your earphones in your <laughs> in your ears and, uh, and ignore them. Anyway... <coughs> Uh, I do hope that you at this point understand that the way I think you should listen to podcasts is not by having this daily everything has to be efficient. It needs to be so smoothly cut and so quick and, and efficient because we have no time to waste. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and it's it's really because I, I do really value efficiency and <laughs> it's part of the reason I'm creating this episode is because of I want more efficiency in your life. But I want you to see that this listen to podcast is a, you can do it as as you're doing other efficient things in your life. So therefore, we can afford the luxury to not be super efficient. Does that make sense? Like we are already doubling our fucking time. Like there's only 24 hours in the day. But if we're actually now we're cooking. So we're getting something done. And we're listening to podcast. And we're listening to this podcast. See I can even make mistakes and, and not edit them out. Just to waste more of your time. <laughs> anyway. We are already doing something productive. So we're basically doubling it up. So. And here's my point. There is certain things that are a bit luxury in life. Like sometimes it's nice to not be so stressed and just relax and take it easy with uh, your partner or your friend or who knows what. Or just after beach volleyball, just hang around and chit chat with people. Who knows what. Or, you know, you might... Some people say take a warm bath just because you deserve it. Like you deserve a little bit of time off. I think there is a some value in not being super stressed all the time. And uh, <clears throat> in a sense, I want to waste some of your time for you to just experience that. <laughs> I hope this makes some sense. <laughs> I really hope this makes some sense. But, you know, if we're already doing two things at the same time, we can also... Uh, we can afford the luxury of doing the second thing in a bit of a slower pace. Um, yeah. No. So, anyway, this brings... Let's just start with the podcast, actually. Um, Yes, you can listen to podcasts while you do other things. So all of the knowledge that you get from a podcast can be seen as bonus knowledge. Just complete free bonus that you're not paying for it. You're not really paying with it for, with time either. And here's, here's the important part. Let's say something that is boring in your life. Maybe you think driving to work is boring. So the way you have done it so far in life is actually boring. It's like a, yes, you get things done in life because you do transport yourself to work, but it's actually boring to do it. So it's actually in some sort of a negative experience in your day. Now, if you listen to podcasts while you do that instead, <laughs> lo and behold, not only are you going to be transporting yourself to work, you're also going to learn stuff about, for example, beach volleyball and chances are you're going to have a better time than if you didn't listen to podcasts. So it's it's a fucking life hack. Like it makes your life more fun. You get stuff done and you get smarter. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what we can do. Uh, we can listen to these things while we do other things. 
uh, and but if we if we <laughs> so one of the ways to start hate listening to podcasts is to stop everything in your life pause everything that you do sit down at the computer at for example youtube and like press play and sit down and listen to a podcast with no picture it's like the best way to to you know a, a video is is engaging if there's good quality content it talks about something there's some visuals that make sense together with the talking and it like engages several of your senses to you know explain a point or whatever but if you're just listening to a voice and there's no picture and especially if the voice is doing what I'm doing in this episode, actually wasting some of your time deliberately, maybe making some mistakes that aren't edited out, like it will drive you nuts. And most <laughs> Western people today with the businesses that we have, they will just be like, fuck this guy, he's wasting my time. I'm never listening to this again. And this podcast listening just absolutely doesn't make sense. So, <clears throat> so it's it's important that we we don't do it that way that we we view this as something that we're doing in the background while we do something else at least in my opinion of course one could create a podcast with a different intention a more well edited podcast with zero just bam 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 no no wasting of time no mistakes nothing but that's what i make the youtube videos for I would rather, you know, make a YouTube video with visuals, which according to me, a 15 minute video with no mistakes and, and sense making talking with, with visuals that, you know, explain the point even further. That's better according to me in conveying a point than a 15 minute, well edited, no bullshit podcast. So why would I create those episodes if I can just uh, create YouTube videos instead? And I think those are better. Not to say that I will never release a 15 minute episode on the podcast, I very well might, but I hope you get my point. Okay, so that was point one. We can do stuff and we can listen to podcasts at the same time. I think you have understood that by now. The second um, point here is that you can come back to episodes. You can come back to episodes whether you have to pause them in the middle of listening to the episode or if you even want to listen to other podcast episodes in between, you can then come back to the previous episode and continue listening from the same spot as before. Um, I think the first time I listened to a podcast, I was online and it's the same on my website. If you go on, on the learnbeachfast.com, on the blog and find a podcast episode of mine. There's going to be a, like a podcast player. You can download the episode, but you can also just press play. And let's say it's a one hour episode. You listen to 30 minutes of it. Then you go do something else and your location in the podcast is going to be gone. And this is super frustrating if you want to get back to the podcast and listen to the rest of it later, because then you have to guess where you were and whatever, scroll forward and then you will probably miss something or listen to something double two times anyway. Whatever, it's just annoying. And <laughs> all I'm saying is that this is not the case as long as you use a podcast app. It's It saves your position and it's not a problem. Also, I think I definitely had this earlier. Uh, I call it <laughs> the finish the book syndrome. So I think there's some kind of perfectionist um, idea that people have that once you start reading a book or start listening to something, you should finish it before you start another. So I've even like, I, I remember before, like I wanted to read a book, but I was in the middle of another book. So I wouldn't let myself start reading the book that I really wanted to read just because this other book wasn't finished yet. And <laughs> I don't know exactly where this comes from, uh, but um, the news is we can, at least everyone I've talked to that tried this, they can, without problems, 
you know, stop listening to one episode or one reading one book in the middle, read another book or listen to another episode and then come back to the original book and still get the point and still get back into the story. Remember what it was about. And it's not a problem. That's just what I'm going to say. This thing that some people think is a problem, it's not a problem. Just try it yourself. I'm going to tell you it's not a problem. Once you realize that yourself from experience, you will realize I'm right. <laughs> of course, if you do try it and you find it is a problem, then you should definitely comment in the comment section below and we'll talk more about it because I want to know why you think that. But for example, I had a conversation with my girlfriend about this and she realized from this conversation that she has sort of a bias. She likes podcasts that are maximum one hour long that she knows that she can like plan in like she might know that she has a one hour drive. So then she finds a one hour podcast and she listens it from the start to finish. And like she plans which episodes she listens to when so that she knows that she can always finish them. I don't have that strategy. I just listen to whatever feels good for the moment when I have time to listen to something. And I have uh, a lot of podcast episodes that are halfway through listened. Some of them might <laughs> I might never finish because I've forgotten about them. But anyway, the, the worthwhile ones, I do come back to them and eventually I listen, I finish them. Sometimes it might take me a month to, to finish listening to a podcast episode because I listen to a little bit of it. Then the, the next time I listen to a podcast episode, there's something else I want to listen to. The next time there's something else, then I listen to a little bit more of this one that I wanted to finish. And then goes two weeks and I forget about everything and then I finish it. So, <laughs> so sometimes I do listen to like an episode over the course of a month. And I'm just going to say that it works. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> try to get rid of this perfectionist state. Uh, just play whatever you feel like and uh, the podcast that will remember all your spots, how much you listen to and whatnot. And, and it's all going to be good. That's, that's the word for me. Try it if you don't believe me. Yo, here's Alex again from the editing process. I realized I need to add something here. So for example, in my podcast, there's, um, there's some ridiculously long episodes. They're over two hours, but the actual interviews are are four and a half hours and I split them into two. So they're like two episodes of two hours, 15 minutes or, or so. And of course, if you have the strategy that you, you're not going to listen to this until you have like a two hour, 15 minute slot where it fits in, you're never going to listen to these episodes. And, and some people have given me some feedback that I should split them up into, into smaller pieces so that they're, they're manageable. But basically what I'm saying is that the podcast app does this work for you. You can split this up in as many or few pieces as you want. Like, I don't want to be the one deciding for you that you need to listen to this in 15 minute pieces or 30 minute pieces or one hour pieces. You can just start the episode, drive for 20 minutes, pause it. The next day, let's say the next day you're cooking dinner for 40 minutes, you listen to 40 minutes. And uh, the third day you do something else and you listen to the rest of the episode. And another person can split it up in a completely different way. So this is, <laughs> as long as you understand how to use the podcast app, you can just split it up however you want because it keeps your spot. So I hope this makes sense. This is why I do release long episodes. Some of the biggest podcasts in the world, they have like three, three hour episodes, even longer than that, maybe sometimes. And a lot of people listen to it and it's not a problem. Just um, just use the podcast app and you're, you're all fine. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the episode. Second point in this episode is I talked a little bit about this in, in uh, part two of this series because I showed the button physically. But learn to use the pause and start button on your headset or your Bluetooth speaker or your speaker or whatever it might be. This is so important because if you predominantly listen to podcasts on the go, which means you're commuting or you're eating or you're maybe you're cooking, whatever, all of these activities that you might be doing at the same time as you're listening to a podcast, 
are activities where it might be very inconvenient to if you want to pause. Let's say let's say you're commuting somewhere and you have to um, take a pause and ask someone something like about directions or whatever it might be, or you know someone dropped their wallet and <laughs> you got a, you picked the wallet up and gave it to them. As this conversation, this short conversation is happening with this with this person, you want to pause your podcast because otherwise you're not gonna get what the podcast is talking about because your mind is gonna be somewhere else, and um, and then you're gonna be lost, you know, if you don't pause the podcast, and then the rest of the episode will be sort of strange to listen to. So, anyway, in all these situations, you're doing stuff, and it's gonna be not so nice to get your phone out of the pocket and to find the pause button on the screen. It's much easier to have a physical button that you can, without even looking down, you can just find the button, feel it with your finger and just click it and the episode is paused. And as soon as the situation is over, you have talked with this person, paid your groceries or whatever it might be, you can just find this button again and click it again and continue listening. Remember, we want to make this as efficient and easy as possible for you. So use absolutely everything that can make it that. <laughs> like, don't skip this little button and uh, make trouble with picking up the phone and here and there and, you know, all this extra work. Just don't do that. Find this little pause button. Okay, another thing. So let's fast forward a few weeks from now. Uh, possibly in a few weeks you will be a, an adamant podcast listener every single time that you have time you know the possibility when you're commuting when you're cooking when you're eating when you're showering blah blah blah, blah. you're always listening to podcasts you're learning so much and you become like this passionate podcast learner that it's just like why did I not know this before now I have to listen to podcasts so much all the time do to do to do to do to do this is there's a chance that you will become this person. I've been this person for sure. And I'm still of course I'm still to some point degree I am because here I am creating a podcast episode about how to make this reality in your life. But anyway, I've heard some critique towards this mindset also and I think this critique is valid. Because there's something so first of all there's something called mindfulness, being present in what you are doing. For example, let's say we're walking. Walking can be a type of meditation where you really like you walk and you feel your steps and you're present in your body and the movement, it, the movements it does. And I mean, I like meditation. A lot of people like meditation. A lot of People think meditation is very important, and I do too. And so therefore, there has been some critique against constantly listening to podcasts because it like takes away your ability to be present with the moment. And I think there's some validity to this. So I think listening to podcasts while you're doing other things is important and is good. But I also want to say that I think sometimes you should just not do it. Um, sometimes maybe you should just walk in silence and um, maybe sometimes I think I'm not sure but if you if you go for example I've, I've noticed like if you take the bus in Sweden <laughs> where where I'm from at least partly and I've lived a lot a lot of people have their earphones in when they're riding the bus and I don't know what is in their earphones but my guess is that quite a lot of it is music. I think some people listen to podcasts and audiobooks, and but I also think some people listen to music. Music also is important in our life, at least according to me. It can put you in a mood. It can pump you up for stuff. It can actually, according to me, it can help you get present with the moment. So it can help you like feel the now <laughs> and uh, the feelings that come that come up in the now. So. Yeah, that's just all I wanted to say. Basically, what we're doing here is we are not talking about 
listen to podcast in one sense. We are talking about how to multitask in the parts of your day that you can multitask. So, according to me, if we're commuting, we can we can <laughs> we can <laughs> we can commute and hate our lives, which is maybe not what we should do. But we can also we can commute and listen to podcasts and listen to stuff or we can commute and meditate and be present with the moment which has some other benefits we can commute and listen to music and uh, that can put us in a positive mood which also has some good stuff we can also we can <coughs> we can commute and think about things which uh, can also be very insightful sometimes it can we can overthink things and it just puts in a like a loop that is not good for us but sometimes we can really like solve problems as we're commuting like we think about what someone said and what someone suggested and we can think about is there some creative ways that i can make this problem in my life go away and sometimes we can come up with solutions so we're really talking about how to multitask in a good way in some parts of your day and i think listening to podcasts is one of them but the goal here is not necessarily to maximize how much podcasts you can listen to the goal here is how to get a good life over time so yeah i just wanted to say that another side point i have written down here in my notes is that there could be periods in your life where you might need to do some heavy focusing like maybe let's for an example say that you realize that in two months you have to have mastered as much as humanly possible of this new language let's say you're going to spain so you have to learn spanish so you want to really maximize how much spanish you can learn in two months maybe the strategy that you should be doing during these two months is doing absolutely every single second where you can listen to podcasts while you do it and other things you're listening to podcasts that teach you spanish maybe this is the smart thing to do if this is the case for you like if there is this heavy focus period Anyway, if that is the case, I would uh, tell the people that live close to you so that they understand what you're doing, so that they don't believe that you just became this antisocial headphone guy or girl uh, <laughs> that just walks with their headphones all the time, just so that they understand that, hey, I'm going to Spain in two months. I need to learn as much as humanly possible of Spanish until that time. I'm going to be fucking listening to Spanish podcasts. 24 7 or as close to 24 7 as possible and that's just what i'm doing hopefully you understand me after this two months i can be social with you again now here i actually get an urge to say one thing which is in this episode i'm i'm giving you advice in a sense i'm telling you what to do because i think it's better to do this way and I definitely just did something like that. Like I, I just told you how to behave towards your friends if you need to focus heavily. What I want to say is that anything I say, I want you to take as suggestions. Uh, I don't know everything in life. I have figured out some stuff that has worked really well for me and for other people. And I like to share these things. But they might be wrong. They might not suit you, whatever. Um, so I'm sharing it. Take it, consider it, use what you can and let the rest be. And uh, <laughs> I hope this, this makes sense. Like it's, it's more like a buffet of ideas. And uh, I hope that there's value in, in some of them, maybe even all of them. Uh, but if something that just doesn't vibe with you, then just let it be. I just don't want to get taken as someone that thinks that they know everything and like, I know best, you should do this, do, 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 do. which, of course, I do have strong opinions about things. For example, I'm creating this episode because I think it's important <laughs> and, and this is a dear subject of mine, but I also also always want to be open minded that, that uh, you know, there could be there could be details that make it not suitable for you. Anyway, the next point, we are going to look at sort of your total, total mental capacity. And uh, this is very tied to sports psychology. 
and sports psychology is beach volleyball. So we are going, to, even though we're talking about podcast listening, we are also going to learn how to become better beach volleyball players here. And so what I wrote down here, you cannot multitask at the same time. You can. Uh, so whatever I'm going to talk about here pay attention to this while you're listening to your future podcast episodes and you might understand sports psychology better also so basically what i'm going to say is here's actually where i would like to have a, a whiteboard and draw this out for you at the same time but maybe you can imagine in the in the in your imagination if you draw a circle and imagine that this is your whole brain or this is your whole attention capability you cannot pay attention to more stuff than than what can fit into this circle. The more stuff you put into this circle, the less space there is left over. So in sports psychology, how this works is, let's say you're playing beach volleyball, your opponent blocks you when you're attacking, and your brain, after you get blocked, gets filled with fucking shit i suck i cannot get around him it's impossible he's so good at blocking whatever it might be and if this happens so i'm not saying that this happens but if this happens your brain is now filled with thoughts and this means that this circle this brain is full with thoughts which means that no new thoughts have space to enter Uh, (laughs) but what if I would say that in the game, it would be better if you get blocked, it would be better to think like, hmm, why did this person block me? Was it because of my timing was wrong? Was it that I I chose the wrong hit in this situation? Uh, maybe, maybe they're always blocking angle and you're always hitting angle. And that's simply the reason that you got blocked, that you're just continuing doing the same thing and they just have noticed that you're always hitting angle so they can just start blocking your angle and they're simply just doing this until it doesn't work anymore (laughs) anyway there's a lot of thoughts that could enter your brain after you get blocked that would actually help you win the game but if every time you get blocked your mind gets filled with shit i suck shit now he did it again you start you know bringing yourself down in a sense like your uh, confidence goes down and whatnot Uh, you're basically filling your brain and your limited uh, (laughs) capability of processing things at the same time. You're filling that space with junk that doesn't help you win and blocks you from the ability to to think more helpful thoughts for winning the game. (laughs) So, okay, that was the quick sports psychology lesson. Uh, Also can apply to practice. So, for example, when we're practicing, we might want to like pay attention to some things but also there if we're like let's say we're irritated our at the person we're practicing with then our mind is filled with like ah why does he do that or why does she say that or why does she always come late your mind can be completely preoccupied with these sorts of thoughts and all the reps that you're doing of your of your service even the practice just you know they they could teach you a lot of things but since your brain is already full with bunch of uh, trash you're just not picking these lessons up (laughs) we need to too often to get better we need to get exposure to beach volleyball in some way and have a clear enough mind to be able to pick new lessons up but if we already filled our brain with a bunch of other stuff then we're not going to be able to pick these things up and their reps uh, i'm not going to say they're worthless but i'm going to say that they're worthless Anyway, how this ties to podcast listening is I'm going to say that there are podcast episodes that have different heaviness of info in a sense. So, okay, earlier I wasted some of your time. I was just talking bullshit, whatever. I was, uh, yeah, who knows what I was doing. I was not like super efficient in delivering like life-changing facts, at least. That's that I could say. Um, 
this in a sense makes this podcast episode a little bit less heavy on info. Then, you know, there's some podcasts that are very conversational. You know, they tell jokes, they tell stories, they blah, 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 they chit chat. And then every now and then they talk about something interesting and then they, you know, talk about a bunch of bullshit again, (laughs) which is not very dense with info. And then there's the the complete opposite, which is like a very structured, like delivering, delivering, delivering super. You need to be very, very engaged mentally to be able to pick this, this stuff up and to process it and understand it and think about examples in your own life and how it applies to you and whatnot and whatnot. whatnot. Like it just takes a lot of brain power for you to pick up the information in this podcast episode. Some episodes that have been like this, I've listened to once. And I listened to them a second time. And the second time I listened to the episode, there was parts of it that I felt like I had never heard. Like I had this huge aha moments. And even though I knew that I have listened to this episode before, I felt like I have never heard this before. And I think this is because there was something insightful in the episode. And it took some brain power from my brain to understand this thing. Like apply it like think about some examples how does this apply to my life and as my brain was doing that the podcast episode continued and then they talked about more interesting stuff but my brain wasn't able to sort of pick this up because it was already busy picking other stuff up this is a very dense type of uh, podcast and why i'm why i'm explaining this is well, it has some practical reasons, but basically if we think about the brain as the circle again, a more dense podcast is going to feel more of that brain and a more lighter podcast is, is going to feel less of it. And how this becomes practical is that I would suggest that you start paying attention to how heavy and dense different podcasts are and then that you start combining them with different side activities so for example let's say i'm cooking uh, and i listen to a podcast at the same time this is a semi this the cooking activity in itself requires some mental activity like i don't want to burn the food i want to make get the ingredients right of course, if it's a if it's a meal that I've cooked millions of times before, then it's going to be more automatized and it's not going to take as much brain power. But let's say I'm cooking a new meal that I've never done before. I'm actually following some recipe. So here, the activity in itself is quite heavy. So in this case, I would absolutely not listen to an information-dense podcast. I would listen to a lighter one. And <laughs> I, I hope... <laughs> I hope they don't mind. Uh, Travis Mewarder was even on my podcast. Uh, But the Sandcast is, I mean, it's a conversational beach volleyball podcast. You can pick up a lot of volleyball lessons from it, but there's also a lot of just funny stories and, and it's very conversational. So actually, this is my one of my lighter podcasts that I I listen to in the background when I, you know, and there's millions of episodes. There's they, there's a lot of hours of, of content on that podcast. So it's like, this is the podcast I listen to most of the time when I'm doing some heavier stuff on the side. And uh, yeah, and then there's there's other other activities. Let's say something easy. Let's say I'm walking. Let's say I'm walking to beach volleyball practice and it's a road that I walked millions of times before. There's no traffic. There's nothing extra. This is a good time, according to me. You know, the activity that I'm doing doesn't fill up a bunch of my brain capacity. So now I have more space to fill up the brain capacity with an information dense podcast. So I would uh, suggest that you start paying no paying attention to how information dense different podcasts are and then you know categorize them and uh, sort of start feeling about which podcast you want to listen to with which activity another just little example of this i want to say that 
rehab exercises or light exercises or stretching that you know a lot of beach volleyball players do at some point uh, whether they're recovering from an injury or they're just injury proofing their bodies for the future these sometimes require a lot of mental capacity to be done properly so that you know you really feel which muscle you're trying to stretch and you're not stretching something else and whatnot and whatnot but once you have learned your stretches sometimes there's also just this like you just need to get the hours in basically or the reps in and it's just very repetitive and uh, i think this can be the perfect time to listen to podcasts uh, I also like having conversations, like phone calls with people that I want to catch up with or discuss interesting stuff with. Uh, sitting and stretching and being on a on a call <laughs> with someone can be can be quite nice, according to me, and much nicer than than just doing the stretching itself because uh, sometimes it can be a little bit boring. Another little side point I had here that I also wanted to mention is I don't have research backing this up maybe i could google and find it but walking makes blood flow which makes you smarter uh there's there's some ceos of some companies that are known to only do walking meetings so if someone wants to have a meeting with them they say yes we can do that but we are going for a walk in the park while we do that and i don't have any as i said i don't have any research backing this up I don't really feel like I care about that because I've tried this and it seems to be true. Like if I if I listen to a very inspirational and insightful podcast that just gives me a lot of new ideas of how I could do things and how I could be a better human person. I just feel like if I'm on a walk or doing something physical at the same time, it's like my brain is firing on more cylinders. Like it finds connection between the podcast episode that I'm listening to and my previous experience is better. It creates these new ideas. I mean, this is this is also a side point, but I will go into this side point since we we can waste time in this podcast episode. No, but like good ideas are often so-called ideas having sex. So let's say I share one idea. I share that moving in service eve can be thought about you know how boxers move uh, when they're fighting and i share that and someone else shares something about maybe posture on how to get your arms to move more efficiently in service eve and those are might be in your brain just two different information points of people's thoughts and then you take a walk and listen to a podcast episode about service eve and it mentions some other detail. In my mind, or in my experience, the chances that these three information points will sort of merge together into like a fuller understanding, like a fourth insight point about the total movement of how service works is greater if I'm doing something physical like walking as I'm listening to podcasts. Uh, again, Maybe this will be your experience. Maybe not. Go and try it out and uh, and see if it works. Then I want to get to a funny one. <laughs> At least I think it's sort of funny. Podcast listening in the shower. If we're going to absolutely maximize our, maximize our life. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, people do shower. Uh, and that takes some time and we can listen to podcasts at the same time if we do it right. So first, the economics of listening in a shower. I did some Googling and the average shower time seems to be, uh, let's see, 9.1 minutes per day, seven days a week. If you do the math, that becomes 55 hours per year. So, okay, let's say 55 hours per year, you're showering. And uh, if you, you're a maximizer, you could probably make that into 55 hours of, of uh, podcast listening. But let's be a bit realistic. Let's say 20 hours per year. You can listen to podcasts if you incorporate 
podcast listening into your life. So 22 hours, no, 20 hours of information about something that you are interested about. Whether that's beach volleyball or, or you know, bettering your life or whatever it might be. There's a chance that in 20 hours there can be some huge value done. A Bluetooth speaker, a waterproof one, a small one. So, so here's the thing. Uh, actually, I've seen, now when I think about it, I've seen that people have these waterproof headphones also. That I have never tried myself. So maybe there's some point in using those. But I use a, a small Bluetooth, a waterproof small Bluetooth speaker that I bring into the shower and hang up on some hook or something. Because I don't want to bring the phone into the shower because, you know, it will get wet and the, the speaker is not so good. Showers tend to be a bit echoey. So you, you want the, the speaker to be a little bit better than a phone speaker. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, so you need to have a solution of some sort of, um, that you can bring with you into the shower. And for example, the Bluetooth speaker that I have, I have the JBL Clip 3. It costs somewhere around 40 to $55. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, let's say that the, <laughs> okay, let's say that the speaker will last you three years. I think it will last you more. But let's say it will last you three years and you're listening to 20 hours of podcasts per year. So it will last you 60 hours of podcast listening and it costs $55. So it's a little bit less than $1 per hour of listening. Now, so to do this math, we have to think how much value do we get out of this? Let's say that if you, <laughs> how do we do this math? Let's say that you, you bought private coaching from a coach that was very insightful. Let's say that listening to a podcast episode is a fourth of that insightful. So let's say a one hour private coaching is, let's say it's a hundred dollars. And, but by listening to one hour of a podcast, you're actually getting value that is worth $25 in terms of insights, in terms of making you a better beach volleyball player, which you do care about if you're listening to the Learn Beach Volleyball Fast podcast. So, you know, you can't calculate these things exactly, but let's say you're gaining $25 of value on average for every hour that you're listening to, to a beach volleyball podcast. And the investment for you to get this Bluetooth speaker, to be able to do this in the shower is less than $1 per hour. So basically you're gaining, if we think about this this way, you're gaining $24 per hour that you're listening to podcasts in the shower. So in one sense, if we allow ourselves to calculate stuff like this, where one hour of podcast listening becomes $24 of value, and we're able to listen to podcasts for 20 hours per year in the shower, basically that would mean that the Bluetooth speaker that allows you to listen in the shower would be worth $480 per year it lives. So <laughs> if it lives four years, that's nearly $2,000. And yes, I understand some people will have some reservations against this type of math because it's not like these $2,000 are just going to show up in your bank account. But actually, if I'm going to be honest with the knowledge that you can gain from these podcasts, these $2,000 and more might actually show up in your bank account one day. So therefore, it's very v worth it to get get this Bluetooth speaker or this uh, waterproof uh, Bluetooth headphones or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I think it does to to calculate the wor worth and value of things sometimes. So all I'm saying is add your podcast listening also to the shower, but you will need to get some equipment to that if you don't own it yet. And um, also I will say that in the description to this episode, I will put an affiliate link to at least the uh, Clip3, JBL Clip3 that I use. And uh, if you're gonna buy the speaker anyway, feel free to buy it through my link because it will cost the same for you as if you didn't use my link, 
but the Learn Beach Hall Fast project will get a little bit of money, like a sidekick money, and that just helps me build this podcast and this project. And ultimately, this project is here to help you. So hopefully, that's a win for you also. So yeah, I don't want to manipulate you to, into anything. I'm basically just telling why I think you should have a Bluetooth speaker if you don't have one to be able to listen to in the shower. And if you're going to buy one, if you do it through my link, you're helping all of us. And I think that's good for you also. Another logistical thing is, uh, is there a quick rewind button on, on you know, when you listen to this in the shower? Uh, when I was planning for this episode, this made me start thinking about this. And I realized that also on the go, like in the traffic or something, it's good to have a quick rewind button on the headphones, which I realized that most headphones and uh, and speakers, they have a play and pause button, and then they have plus and minus for the volume. But in part two of this series, I showed that, you know, the 15 second rewind function is very important because sometimes you might want to re-listen to something or you didn't quite catch what someone said or it's just very insightful and you want to re-listen to it. And it's very nice to be able to quickly rewind the episode and go back and listen to it. And, you know, in the shower, sometimes there's some water splash that makes a sound and then you miss what someone said and then you want to re-listen to it. So it would really help if we were able to, when we're in the shower, be able to rewind on the podcast without having to, you know, find a towel, dry our hands, find the phone, and then start clicking on the screen, which sometimes still doesn't work because there's humidity and that just doesn't make the screen like <laughs> do what it should. And, and it's just uh, irritating. So I started looking, is there a solution for this? And uh, there seems to be one, um, which I'll share it to you now. So this is a solution in the app that I use that I showed you in, in part two of this uh, series, the, the Podcast Addict app. And basically the workaround I found was you go to Podcast Addict, you go to settings. Actually, I can write this out in the description of this episode also. Anyway, you go to settings, then you click on player, then you click on behavior. Then you turn incremental rewind off, uh, which is a function that is normally on in the, in the podcast uh, app. And then you set automatic rewind to wish for time, like 15 seconds. So so basically you're putting on the automatic rewind and you choose how many seconds. So what this does is that every time you, if the podcast is playing and then you click pause, which you can do from your magic button on your headphones or on your speaker, and then you pr press play again. So you're pausing and you're playing again. It basically automatically rewinds 15 seconds when you do that. Yes, it could be an inconvenience if you really hate listening, re-listening to 15 seconds every time you happen to have to pause. But it could also be a nice workaround for if you're in the shower, then you can just click twice on the play pause button, which means that you will rewind 15 seconds. If you want to do 30 seconds, you can click four times, I guess, etc. Uh, that's the best workaround I found so far. Maybe there's more workarounds. Maybe if we want to discuss those, we can do that in the comment section for this episode. All right. Uh, we are covering a lot of ground in this episode. Anyway, I also want to talk about speeding up podcasts or not, because there is uh, in this podcast apps, you can speed up the episodes and, um, my answer to that is is try it out. Try it out and see what happens. I have some friends that listen at 3x speed. <laughs> like really fast. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like that. But I guess you could. In a sense, I think what, what they do is they listen to something in at 3x speed like as a quick scan at first. And then if it seems good, then they re-listen to it in a slower pace. I guess that's the strategy. Um, I, I'm usually not that stressed. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I listen to these things in the background when I do other things. So 
I sometimes I try 1.2 or 1.25 or 1.3 or 1.5 speed, uh, especially if it's someone that speaks a little bit slower. If someone thinks I speak too slow and want to listen to me at 1.5, I won't get offended. Feel free to do that. Um, but yeah, I would say that try it out, experiment with it as with everything else and uh, see what you find is best for you. But for those that didn't know it, in podcast apps, you can usually speed up the voice or even slow it down if you want. And that might help you listen to the episode better. Then there's a part that I want to mention, which um, it's, it's like a safety thing. Basically, I'm saying <laughs> there's a part of me that doesn't want to say this because I don't want to encourage into any sort of behavior that can be dangerous. At the same time, everyone is already doing this, so I might as well just create some awareness around it. I mean, who doesn't listen to radio or something while they're driving the car? Which means that basically people are listening to stuff while uh, being in the traffic. Anyway, what I'm saying is that when you're in the traffic, make sure that you're listening to the podcast in some way so that you can still hear the traffic. So that you can hear if there's some huge vehicle coming from the back or wanting to overtake you or honking at you or whatever. Um, so yeah, car stereo, Bluetooth speaker. I have these uh, headphones called the Porta Pros. I can of course link to those also in the in the description below and and if you buy them through my link it will help the project but they're very easy to remove uh, quickly from your head or like from one of your ears and also they're not like noise canceling so they just add sound to your ears but you're still you're still hearing your surroundings really well i used to be like a semi professional snowboarder and i always used these in the slopes because i always wanted to hear what people said and told me and and talked with me but I also liked listening to music in the slopes so I used the Porta Pros and I think they can be also good for for podcast listening in the traffic if you're if you're doing that uh, so yeah do what you do with your life but please uh, please if you're in the traffic listening to to stuff make sure that you can hear the traffic also Cool. We just have two more points left in this, uh, what I had planned for this episode. What I want to say is something I have mentioned earlier in the Learn Beach Volvo Fast project, but it bears repeating. And that is that not only Beach Volvo podcasts can be useful for your Beach Volvo career. There's lots of podcasts that talk about success, learning, life hacks, etc. In uh, just in other domains like other sports, in business, in life, in relationships, and <laughs> you know, relationships. Remember that we we play a, a sport like a two versus two sport. There is a relationship to our playing partner. There's a relationship to our training partners or coaches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So actually, just listening to relationship podcasts could be very helpful for beach volleyball. Anyway, so. I'm just suggesting you to, to keep your mind open to that other things than beach volleyball topics in your podcast listening can help you with your beach volleyball. And uh, this is also why I sometimes will have non-beach volleyball people guesting this podcast. The first episode was with a golf guy, but like a golf hacker guy. Uh, <laughs> and it was a really good episode and I've gotten a lot of good feedback for it. And people thought it was insightful for Beach Volleyball, but the guest has, I don't know if has, uh, he has ever touched a, touched a Beach Volleyball. But yeah, I just wanted to say that life is complex, Beach Volleyball is complex, and uh, there's usually overlap between different complex things. So, and there's tons of uh, podcasts in the world, like there's so many. And uh, there's not so many about Beach Volleyball, but there's so many about success and about other sports and how to get good at other sports and how to get better at business and how to get better at life and whatnot and whatnot. And you can listen to this and just take these concepts that they're talking about and apply them to, to beach volleyball. I mean, I'm sure if you have followed my project, you see that a lot of my work is created this way. It's just like smart things that I heard from other sports or, or from whatever life coaches, whatever business coaches, and I just apply it to beach volleyball and like uh, 
here I am uh, trying to make you you get better at beach volleyball with the help of these thoughts. And the last thing I want to say is that I said in the beginning, in the intro of this uh, this episode, that at this point I don't need to do shit. I think I said to my my life just gets better on autopilot because I just listen to podcasts and it just happens automatically, and I get more and more good ideas into my brain by doing this. So what I want to say is that listening to podcasts just becomes a habit. After you got used to it and after you get enough reps of it, you don't even need to think about it anymore. Like when you're commuting, you are <laughs> you will just go to the podcast app and find something that seems interesting and seems to be at the right information denseness for the activity you're about to do. And you just listen to it in the background. And then you, when you get to work or get to practice, you pause it the podcast app saves your your position in the podcast episode and when you go back home you can continue listening to it or whatever it's there's a lot of good ideas recorded in different podcasts out there in the world and you can make it a habit to automatically listen to this while you're doing other stuff in your life so it doesn't take any time it doesn't cost any money it's just like good ideas inserted into your brain on autopilot and to whoever that believes that our reality can radically change if we get solutions to our problems <laughs> we'll see the value of this uh, sometimes I, I think of myself as we all have different problems in life we want to get better at volleyball we want to get healthier we want to get blah 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 there's all these things that we want to get like this these problems that we have i see sort of a, as podcast listening as solution injecting into your mind so sometimes you're injecting solutions that is not a problem for you right now but it's sort of it goes like into the library of your mind your your brain's library of ideas of different solutions just it's bigger and bigger and bigger over time on autopilot at this point, it's probably, I don't know, maybe it's seven years ago since I started listening to podcasts, like, you know, in daily life, like all the time. And sometimes I get a problem in my life that I've never encountered before. And my mind just goes like, aha, this is where I'm going to use the solution that I listened to this to in this podcast episode like three years ago. And then, <laughs> then, you know, something that would have become a big problem in my life because I didn't have the solution, I know how to solve it straight away. Just because I've, for years now, I've injected good ideas into my mind on autopilot. Uh, so, yeah, again, this is just my experience. I suggest you try it out and uh, see if it works for you. I think it's life-changing. So, yes. Thanks a lot for listening to this episode. I hope it has been very insightful, even though I <laughs> wasted some of your time. Maybe that was also insightful. Who knows? Uh, but thanks for listening. And so I've shared a lot of hacks, a lot of thoughts here. Uh, this is probably not a, I mean, this is not a comprehensive list of hacks. If you have found any of your own hacks or thoughts that you might want to share, or if you have any thoughts on the stuff that that I've shared throughout this this episode or this content series, regardless of what it is, if it's on this topic, share it in the YouTube comment section for this episode. So, so far, and I'm probably going to continue with this, every podcast episode that I release, I also release on YouTube with as just a pictureless video. Or sometimes there's picture if, if, uh, if I have, well, some, <laughs> some episodes are recorded so that there's picture. And of course, uh, I put that in the video also. But for example, this one, there will just be a picture. But anyway, I link these YouTube videos. I link the episode on YouTube into the episode description on the podcast. So if you're listening to this episode on a podcast, you can go to the description of this episode and click the link to this same episode on YouTube. And there you find a comment section. That was a long way to describe that. I've done it in shorter ways in, in other episodes. But anyway, 
uh, there we can discuss, you can uh, share your thoughts or your own hacks and I can answer and we can discuss them further. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome that we can do that. Uh, it really helps all of us. And of course you can go there and just read if people have shared stuff. And who knows, maybe if we end up having like huge discussions there, very insightful ones, Maybe I will create a fourth episode to this uh, podcast listening series one day uh, if I feel like it's needed. In that case, this episode will be linked in the show notes of this episode. So yeah, now I've <laughs> I've said a lot of stuff that I will have to put into the show notes of this episode, but that's where you can go and find it all. All right. Thanks. I think this was this was it. I hope for our all sake that if you haven't listened to all the Learn Beach Volvo Fast podcast episodes so far, that now it will be a little bit easier for you to do that. And I also hope that the episodes are so good that you really want to and uh, that uh, you will also listen to other podcasts because of this and that your life and your Beach Volvo career will just simply become better because of this it's not always a short-term thing like i said sometimes solutions to problems i have now the solutions i listened to years ago like <coughs> this whole effect from listening to podcasts really becomes bigger and bigger the longer time goes of course sometimes you can listen to an episode and already the next weekend in the tournament like apply this this tip and bam cool in a very short-term way, your life got better because you listened to podcasts. But really, the long-term effects is, I think, where the biggest goal is to be found. If you just trust the process, you just make it a habit to listen to these episodes while you're doing other things. And just trust that you're injecting smart things into your brain, which will make you a better problem solver in the future. Uh, yeah, it just happens, and it's awesome. All right, thank you. Talk to you soon again in another episode, maybe in a YouTube video, whatever it, it will be. If you have any thoughts, write them in the comments below. Uh, yeah, of course, subscribe to everything. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't. Subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't. Subscribe to my email list if you haven't, because, uh, well, uh, it's important. I'll, I'll tell you that. The email list, those people are going to get to know about stuff in the future earlier than other people and they, they will be happy for it and also i have a facebook group that you should join um, again all in the description of this episode all right cool talk to you later bye if you enjoyed this episode or this podcast listening series as a whole i would of course really appreciate it but i would also recommend you to share it to other players and training partners etc because the thing is that this sport you're not doing it alone. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a two versus two sport. So regardless, you're going to have to need to have a, a playing partner. But you're also going to have training partners and various people around you just helping you on the journey. And what I found out during my, my own journey is that the more you and your training partners are synced on ideas, the smoother the journey becomes. Because let's say that this episode actually makes you listen to a lot of Beach Volvo podcasts in the future, then these episodes are going to basically inject your brain with new ideas, like ideas about tactics, training styles, um, training ideas, techniques, whatever. And um, if you and your training partners all like listen to the same ideas, that just puts you guys in like a position where you can then discuss these things, you can build on top of them, you can try them, and you're just synced automatically. And <laughs> trust me, I know from experience that if you're the only one that has these ideas, it's still better than not having the ideas, but it's sort of frustrating because you need to like re-explain things and like try to, you know, get people on the same train as you and, and whatnot. So, 
<laughs> it's just smoother if it happens like automatically. And one way you can make that happen is basically just to get other people to listen to this episode also, or these episodes, and also see the value in listening to podcasts in general. And then you guys can listen to the same episodes and and yeah, basically you just get synced. So that's my recommendation for you. Do share this episode. We're all winning from that. You win, the volleyball world as a whole wins, and it helps me grow the podcast, which makes it easier for me to produce future episodes, which means you win again. And you know, that's just a good place to be. So why not?